Hey Lakerland, what's up? Duncan here. Let's talk Lakers off season. Uh, but before we do, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit that bell for notifications. Comment in the box below and come find me on Twitter at Google Plus. So let's talk Lakers and Laker progression. S this off season, there's a few things we need to worry about. I believe the very first thing we need to do is keep our core together. I don't believe we need to be trading for uh, Kwani. I don't think we need to be making an, any real drastic changes of our core. We have a solid core. Lonzo, Ingram, Hart, Kazuma, uh, those are all solid players. And we even have players that really need more time that are still young as well. What the rumor is, is everybody's out talking about bringing in a superstar. Everybody's talking about bringing in multiple superstars. So let's break down exactly what happens and how I believe the things go down. First, most of these big name stars are going to want to play with the team of this year. So we cannot go ripping that team down. We can't take most of our key players and get rid of them and exchange them and trade this thing around. We can't make a lot of moves that essentially is going to hurt us and our team chemistry that we have now. So let's go over a few things that we can do. First and foremost, I, I believe KCP is gone. He, I don't think he really fits. I think Josh Hart gave us everything that KCP is and more for a portion of the cost. With that being said, this is where I, I'm hoping Paul George comes in. Now, if Paul George gets bumped out of the playoffs quick, which I'm thinking he will because he's up against the Jazz and they're a formidable team, I can see Paul George seeking a destination of a young team that's on the uprise with a lot of money that could potentially bring in better talent. But Paul George is going to want to go to this team, which means you're going to want to bring back Randall. Now, the reason I want to bring back Randall is because Magic really challenged him during the last offseason, challenged him to get in the gym, challenged him to come back stronger, uh, and to really earn it. And of all the players on the team, he's the one that really took that to heart. So I don't think Magic is going to let him walk considering I can see him using Julius as an example of what he's expecting from the rest of the players. Now imagine Alonzo Ball that gets bigger, stronger, with more experience. A guy that can play 70 games. A guy that can play 28, 30 minutes a game. Now when you get to that aspect, you're going to add some experience to his game... You're talking about a guy that can potentially be a triple-double machine because his biggest weakness right now is scoring and Magic has already said he wants Lonzo to be more aggressive at the hoop. So you can imagine he's going to be rolling at least 10 to 12 points a game and the way he passes, the way he gets assists, I'm not doubting the rest of it. He could potentially be a double-double to a triple-double machine every night. Okay, now, I do believe we need a better backup than Isaiah Thomas, especially since Isaiah is coming off of his second in major injury. Um, who knows if he's even going to be close to what he was. He showed signs of it, but he really didn't show enough to really impress me. I think the Lakers are going to want to go after a solid backup point guard, a guy that can step in as a starter if need be. I can see them spending 15, 16 million on one. Who knows who it is? Um, you know, as of right now, even Rondo is showing to be a pretty good option there as he's playing his heart out there for the Pelicans in the playoffs right now. So who knows who comes off the bench, but the Lakers need to invest a little bit of money and get a point guard who can play the same style of game as Lonzo as we want to play which means a lot of passes along with scoring at the basket and aggressive defense. 
this is where I think Rondo does fit in perfectly. Um, a guy that can come off the bench and not really change the way we play. Now, you bring in a guy like Paul George, who I think is going to be a Laker this year, and that means Josh Hart's coming off the bench. He's going to pull about 15, 16 minutes. He can play as a backup point guard as well. So he's going to scrap for minutes. He's going to be rolling about 15, 16, 17 minutes a game. A guy that's going to be an instant defense, a 3 and D type player who's already said he's going to try to get stronger and more aggressive at attacking the hoop. So imagine his abilities coming off the bench. Now, that leaves the third place for maybe a rookie or someone of that sort. Your small forward's Brandon Ingram. Here's a guy that I think is getting challenged this year. This is do or die for Ingram. This is make 20 points a game, increase your all your stats, and show that you can be an all-star. If he can do that, then he's going to continue being a Laker. I don't see us going after somebody to take his position right now. Unless, of course, Kevin Durant wants to leave the Warriors. In which case, I can see us throwing a bunch of money at Durant. Um, now, with Ingram there, I think a better choice would be Trevor Ariza. Who, you know, he's another guy that can come off the bench, play a solid defense off the bench. He brings you points, three-point shooting. That's a guy that can really be a spark off that team. And could you imagine the defense you could roll with Rondo, Hart, and Ariza all right there coming off the bench? Then you go to your power forward position. We know we got Kazuma. Kazuma's the future. Okay, this guy is going to get stronger. He's going to get more experience, more confident. He's going to be even better than he is right now. I believe we're bringing back Randall, like I said. So there's your one and two. Now, we want to roll a Thomas Bryant right there at the third, and only because Bryant has the ability to shoot. He's tearing up the G League. Think of like a Tim Duncan in his prime, a guy that was a center that played power forward. That would be the Tim, the Thomas Bryant type role. Now, that leaves Brooke Lopez. He's already hinted that he would take less money to stay in L.A. He's already hinted that he wants to stay there, and we have the bird rights to do it. So I could see him taking a small, smaller salary, you know, maybe an eighteen and a half million salary, to stay a Laker, maybe a two to three year eighteen and a half million dollar salary, in which case we could do a lot worse at the big man. We got Zubak there as well, that really needs more minutes. Um, he needs to develop. This, I believe, is also a do-or-die year for him. He has to prove that he can run the transition that you know we, the Lakers are wanting to run. But I could also see us investing in a solid backup point guard some, or center like a Nerlens Noel, somebody that can add rebounds and defense off the bench. You get a Noel in there, and suddenly, again, Here's my roster for next year. Okay, you would have Lonzo Ball, who's bigger, stronger, more aggressive attacking the hoop. You're talking potential all-star. You have Paul George, who we all know is going to be a 20 to 25 point a night guy. He is an all-star. You got Brandon Ingram, who's going to be a 20 to 22 point a night guy, who should be an all-star. You got Kyle Kazuma, who's going to get better. And he's going to be close to that mark. And then you got Randall backing him up, but you got Kazuma there. And at center, you got Lopez, who's going to be a lot of scoring in the paint. And whether or not people want to believe it, he did all right at protecting the rim. His biggest weakness is rebounding. That was his biggest weakness. That's always been his biggest weakness. Now you got your backups of Rondo, Hart, Ariza, Randall, and Noel. Could you imagine the defense off the bench? So when your starters are out, you can literally line switch and have a team, a roster, a lineup that nobody's really going to score on or it's going to become very difficult to score on. 
you can have reserves like Alex Caruso, um, Travis Ware, or again, you have your rookie with Thomas Bryant and Zubok. I mean, that's a team that can contend next year. We don't need to go spend a ton of money on multiple superstars. We need to allow the players that we drafted to become superstars. Okay, this will be Lonzo's second year. Brandon Ingram's third. This is where Brandon Ingram should become a star this year. Okay, Josh Hart has proven that he can play very well with the pros, and he's going to get better. Potential sixth man of the year candidate. Julius Randle has proven that he's going to be a beast, and he's going to continue working on it. We've all seen what happens when he puts his heart and his mind to it. We've seen the improvement. The additions of Noel, the defense, the additions of Zubox increase improvement. Thomas Bryant's minutes. I mean, this is a team that can actually potentially play very well and win a lot of games next year. I don't think it's going to be hard to sell any of these players to come to L.A. and or to stay in L.A. And that's my belief. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, please click in that box from for comments hit that bell for notifications subscribe to the channel if you haven't already like the videos and come find me on face or on uh, facebook uh, twitter google plus and pretty much all of them so have a great day um go lakers peace dunking out